Hello everyone, this is Skyler from Skyler's Creative Cave. I'm uh, doing my Q&A video. It's probably going to be pretty short. Uh, I apologize for the poor mic quality. Uh, just a generic Walmart mic. <laughs> Alright, let's get started here. If Nintendo hired you to work on a third hero time game, what ideas would you most want to implement? Honestly, I would say that the only idea I'd really want to implement is some kind of connection between Ocarina of Twi Time and Twilight Princess. Uh, specifically, like, the Hero of Time's lineage and uh, related to the hidden skills and, you know, what kind of happened there. Um, it's kind of a huge plot point in Twilight Princess, and I'd like to see, like, what led to that. Alright, next question. Which Link voice actor is your favorite of all time? I don't really know how to pronounce his name, but the voice actor for Adult Link and Ocarina of Time, I think his name is Hiyama. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his first name. I just, it's very iconic. Um, Wind Waker was probably my first game, and I've never really related to Child Link. So my first Adult Link was Ocarina of Time Link. And so I kind of, like... A lot of what I like is actually based on Ocarina of Time, which is odd, because Wind Waker and Twilight Princess were my more dominant games growing up. I'm curious on your opinions on Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom versus the rest of the series. Those two games can feel like their own thing, separate from their more traditional Zelda games, so I'm wondering if you enjoy that style, and if so, would you prefer open air or traditional Zelda? Honestly, I pref prefer the traditional Zelda. I, I just like having the items and like I really feel like the restrictions of those games really help be able to build those worlds and those dungeons and those puzzles. Um, I think the more open Zelda games kind of suffer due to their freedom. I really feel like having some restrictions really like um, makes it so that... Uh, they can make some really good puzzles. It's you have more of an ach an achievement when you actually um, complete a puzzle because there's more difficulty. I I really feel like the open format doesn't allow for that same feeling of achievement, especially when it comes to to even traversal. Like I think Tears of the Kingdom was a huge step up from Breath of the Wild in that sense because. A lot of the mechanics used for traversal that were like teased in Breath of the Wild, like uh, Link cutting a tree across a gap, that was never used in Breath of the Wild. But in Tears of the Kingdom, like there, there was a few cases where I'd say that there was. I, there was one time I built a bridge to get a Korok across, uh, like a mud swamp. I, I do think that both have their merits. I prefer the traditional Zelda, but if Tears of the Kingdom is closer to where we're going with open world Zelda games, I would be okay with that. I wasn't very fond of Breath of the Wild, but I think Tears of the Kingdom did a whole lot better in a lot of regards. Honestly, though, like, Tears of the Kingdom's biggest improvement for me was the NPC interaction and the, um, the puzzle, or not the puzzles, well, I guess the puzzles too. The shrines were so much better in that game as well. Um, NPC interaction and side quests. On the subject of NPC interaction, a lot of people say the world doesn't feel very connected, and I like I very disagree with that. And that's because like there will be times where I'm just traveling in the game, and I find an NPC that I saved a while that I even forgot about. They're like, "Oh hey, I remember when you helped me," and then they give me some lore about the area that we're in at the time. I think that's awesome. I mean, it makes that makes it feel a little bit closer to how Majora's Mask felt, which is actually my favorite Zelda game. Um, just the world felt so alive, and I think Tears of the Kingdom was a little bit closer to that. Uh, sorry if I went on a little tangent there and got off topic, but that's just how I felt about that. <laughs> Have you ever thought about doing concept styling from the Oracle Ages and Seasons and Ocarina of Time? Um, I already have. Um, I re I'm pretty sure I've released it for Mod Loader, which is uh, Ocarina of Time. Well, no, it's not really Ocarina. It's its own emulator, but it's there's a, a Ocarina of Time specific uh portion of it that i think i released it for uh this one was in spanish so i had to use google translating uh how long have you worked on zelda modding um 
think the first time I modded Zelda was way back in like 2010 and it started small. I was doing something uh, as small as it was just like a texture replacement Ocarina of Time. I even remember uh, the person who wrote the tutorial for it, their name was Soul of Deity. And that was the first and only time I ever used GIMP. And when I became just, I didn't start doing like models and stuff um, until like 2015. When I was a part of the Tomoya Hamasaki uh, Twilight Princess HD texture pack, which is not, it's kind of a sore note for me. It's actually kind of where like my work now stemmed from. Um, but I'd say between 10 and 10 to 13 years, maybe. What's your general opinion on Twilight Princess and the link of the game? Twilight Princess is pretty high up there. I think it's probably my second or third favorite Zelda game. Um, the, the Link design of that game, the Link general, was my favorite um, for the longest time, but there's a question later on that that's going to kind of spoil what's my my new favorite Link that finally is able to dethrone Twilight Princess Link. Oh, actually, it was the next question. Uh, the best Link design, in my opinion, would be the Champion's Leathers from Tears of the Kingdom. I just think it's very well balanced. My favorite color is blue, so... <laughs> I might be a little biased, but I just love the design of it. It's got like the intricate details of the, of how like tw the Twilight Princess tunic had, but it adds its own flair and like, it's just, it's so cool. I really like it. I just wish they would have added a matching blue cap because I really like the traditional Zelda cap, but I, I usually just make mine black and that works out for me. What's your favorite type of pasta? Chicken Alfredo. Me and my girlfriend get that all the time. It's, it's, it's really good. Uh, which art style do you prefer? Wind Waker HD or Wind Waker GameCube? I want to say I prefer the Wind Waker HD when it's working. When the cell shading is working, I just think it's really crisp, bright, and colorful, and very pretty. Um, but I think I would say the GameCube one is better in terms of consistency, because you don't really have to deal with the clay-like models, which I, I actually like. I just kind of prefer consistency. Who is your favorite hero out of all the links? Uh, the Hero of Time, um, and that's because he really reminds me of a Greek tragedy. It's like, no matter what, he kind of has an unhappy ending, which honestly makes me feel sad. The Hero of Time is actually why I'm not fond of Wind Waker from a narrative standpoint. Like, it's a very good, it's a very good story, don't get me wrong. But every time I get it, I just feel sad that knowing that the work I did playing on her time meant nothing because the kingdom got um, destroyed anyway. But the Hero of Time is definitely my favorite. Uh, spec obviously, that's why I think a lot of my work modding-wise is centered around the Hero of Time. A lot of people, there was a joke that I did Twilight Princess Link and everything, but I've actually done Ocarina Time Link and more things than that, even in his own game. Who do you think is the strongest and more powerful Link and why? I'm going to say Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom Link. Um, now hear me out, I know there's a lot of the links with power-ups and all that, but just got to think about it, like, at a base standpoint... This link created the meme of lore accurate link. This link is powerful as hell. Um, excuse my language, sorry. Um, but just like the game builds him up, like when you're not playing, even when you're not playing as him, to be an ultimate badass. Like he's just super strong, super powerful, which is also what makes when he gets taken down a more impactful Breath of the Wild and even in Tears of the Kingdom. Who do you think is, or what do you think is the easiest console you've made mods for and hardest? I would say the easiest is, in terms of consoles, I would say maybe Ocarina of Time. Um, and hardest, I would say, is Twilight Princess. Um, oh, I, I, I'm gonna get, I'm just gonna answer those by games rather than console. Um, Twilight Princess isn't actually too hard anymore, um... But 3DS used to be hardest, but the tools advance a little bit farther now, so it's a, it's a whole lot easier to, like, test things. But I would definitely say Twilight Princess is the hardest. Well, I'd say Twilight Princess mixed with Skyward Sword because um, Link's face, head, and body are all three different models, and they're not lined up, so that's kind of the hardest part of it. Um, other than that, though, like, all the Zelda games have become a lot more easy to mod in recent years. Well, that would appear that's the last question I have from YouTube, so let's check the Discord. Um, are you going to be working on any original game development projects, either solo 
or in collab with others after you wrap up your current modding projects. Big fan work, by the way. Uh, thank you, Skuma. Um, I've always wanted to, but in my real life, I don't really have a whole lot of time to. Um, especially since, like, I spend a lot of time at work, and I don't really make a whole lot of money where I work either. So I kind of have to focus on my job, and when I get off work, I'm just so tired. I don't ever want to work on anything. Which is why my work has been stagnated a lot recently, but I try to get in some when I can. Um, I do freelance work every once in a while as well. I've been working on commissions for Twilight Princess just for the models. The, I do the imports for free because I'm not being paid for mods. Um, I've thought about making my own game or even a graphic novel, but I'm so rusty when it comes to drawing and I have no time to refine my skills. Um... And in terms of game development, I just don't think I'm smart enough to to program anything or like I want to learn how to animate as well. But animation is also a huge time consuming thing. The problem is, is like I don't have time in my life to do all these things that I want to do, which is really unfortunate. Once you retire, what is the plan for the Discord and YouTube channel? Will you potentially upload gameplay content? Mm, I'm not quite sure. I think when I'm done with modding, I'm... The Discord's going to stay, whether it's for archive reasons or to hang out. Um, I definitely encourage you guys a lot more to come hang out and talk, you know, share memes, you know, whatever. I have this whole thing set up here. Um, but I think I might start trying to use my YouTube channel to, um, like, broadcast everything I've learned. A lot of the things I've learned, I, are, I've not been able to find tutorials for, and I feel like if I can't find tutorials for the things I've learned and I've learned to do them, it would do, it would be fair to like give back in, in like that sense to, to show and learn or help people learn what I know. Cause I don't want to be the, the modder that um, leaves the community without ever giving the information that they've learned. So I want to do videos on modeling texture work. I'm going to have uh, tutorials for modding Twilight Princess to make that easier for people. Um, which will be a series of videos. We'll start with easy, intermediate, and then advanced. Advanced being, or beginner being like static model imports, intermediate character model imports, and advanced being like Wii U imports. Uh, but yeah, will you port Art Faithful Link to to ship to Heart Kinian when it uh, sports model replacement? I answered that. Um, I'm not sure if I answered it here. Oh, I answered to him personally, actually. Um, probably not, and that's just because the the Majora's Mask PC port would have to add like support for the adult link. Like it's in the code, but they would have to make it a feature. And um, getting a lot of features like that, like they have no reason to. They try to improve the vanilla experience, and that's not something that they would add because there's nothing that they could really use for it. I don't think. Uh, I haven't been keeping up with the game in terms of modding, but is custom animations possible in Majora's Mask Ocarina of Time? Uh, yes, technically with uh, Decomp, the original games, not... Or, well, the 3DS games actually is too. I've messed around with Ocarina of Time 3D animations. Um, why is Oot Link or Ocarina of Time Link in a blue tunic the best looking thing ever? I don't know. Uh, I also prefer that because like my favorite setup is to have the blue tunic, uh, the Master Sword, the Mirror Shield. Like That's just... Uh, a real good blend of colors for me um which i'm colorblind by the way if none of you knew uh but i know it just is <laughs> what inspired you to do modding now this is this is the question i want everyone to pay attention to because i get a lot of requests on modding things the thing that inspired me to do modding is there's a lot of things i wanted and no there was nobody who was going to do them for me so i was like i will do it myself the whole reason i learned how to mod is is uh, fine, I'll just do it myself. And I've learned a lot, and like I've met a lot of cool people. Like uh, There's a lot of really cool minds out there, a lot of creative people. What is your favorite food? The basic American food, even though it's not technically American. My favorite food is cheeseburgers. <laughs> what kind of tip or something you wished you knew would you knew would you have to say for any motivated freshy artist or model um a tip i would say is to dump textures and study them that's how i started and things i wish i knew um 
uh, there's nothing I could really say that I wish I knew because I kind of learned things as I needed them. Favorite personal project? Um, I would say that the Hero of Time and Twilight Princess and Ocarina of Time 3D I'm working on are probably my favorite personal project. Um, why don't you show almost your face? Uh, or we hear this person, don't make fun of them, please, because they don't speak English natively. They're pretty cool, dude. Why don't you show your face or hear your voice in your videos? I think I heard you once in some Hard for Games video, but nothing else. I know you're going to retire, but always a more human touch would help the channel grow. I'm not gonna lie, the reason I don't show my face and do a lot of voiceovers like this is just because I'm not very good at video editing and I'm not good at scripting. This is probably the best spoken I have ever been in a video. So I'm just not very good at it. It's just easier to make record a video and put it out there. What is your favorite Zelda character? Link. <laughs> it will always be Link. I like Lineback too. Like, I don't know why. He just reminds me of Jack Sparrow. And I like him. There's a lot of really cool Zelda characters. Um, oh, uh, Ganondorf the Tears of the Kingdom is also a badass. How did you start modding? Uh, just things I wanted to see and thought I'd do it myself. I answered that kind of. Uh, what motivated me to start? It was just... There was a lot of toxic people when it came to learning things so you kind of just had to learn by yourself but there's also been a lot of cool people what's your favorite anime i'm not really a fan of anime but this is going to be a lot of people are going to say i'm basic for this but my favorite anime is dragon ball z um any plans to go open source with your models if when you retire from modding what's your best advice for someone newish to modding do you have any formal art training Oh, this is a good question. Do you have any formal art training, schooling, etc., or are you entirely self-taught? Um, in terms of going open source, I've thought about it. I'm just a little worried about people taking my models and then taking credit. I've thought about it. Um, I'm just not really sure where I would go about doing that if I were to. Um, the be the best advice I have for someone new to modding is just if something doesn't work, keep trying. If it frustrates you, then um come back to it later it took me five years to get character models working for twilight princess and like even then i'm not the one that made the tool i did help find the issue and after that the tool creator was able to figure it out but honestly it's just banging your head on the table is really part of the process do you have any formal art training i do not i am entirely self-taught i started drawing when i was about four years old and I drew for a long time um, I didn't start getting into 3d until 2015 which when I was uh, 14 or 15 years old to getting ready to turn 16 and ever since then I've taken a lot more to 3d modeling and texturing um, but I am entirely self taught I've taken art classes but they don't teach you anything which is probably something you'll hear a lot of art youtubers say is like Art doesn't, it's just something you kind of have to learn for yourself. Um, so yeah, I'm entirely self-taught. Um, for anyone wanting to learn what I do, I started off by just dumping textures from the game and trying to replicate them just like you would a drawing. And eventually I kind of just learned the styles. Three questions. One, will you ever finish the High Poly Link mod for Twilight Princess? Yes, it's already finished. I just have a few things to tweak on it and then I'll release it. I'm just not sure where to kind of put that in my schedule for things to do. What kind of black magic do you do to make your mods look so official? This person right here answered my question really well, so I'll read that. How's life? It's all right. Stressing about life. Just trying to earn more money so that I can, you know, be an adult. <laughs> Any ideas of what comes next after retiring from mods yet? I kind of already answered that, so I'll skip that. But this is a really good response because this is pretty much exactly it. And it's probably a better answer than I ever could say. I am in no position on answering on his behalf, but I am an artist too. And I can say that for how blah, blah, blah does look so official is a mix of being relatively skilled in some sector, in that case, the 3D modeling, and studying well official material. Skylar relies a lot on official media, which is true, and lore equivalents. For example, the Wind Waker Hero of Time is based on the statue seen at the Hyrule Castle of the same game, which is true. I, uh, that is true. Then it's just a work of studying the art style of some de determined game. So not only Link, but other characters of the same game. This right here is a good example. Um, the hair that you see here 
in uh, the Hero of Time mod, um, the color I used was actually Colin's hair. So I can get a um, in-world equivalent to what a yellowy blonde would be. So I used Colin's hair. So other characters the same game. That's per like that's a perfect relation for me. And understanding why and how they belong on that world with design elements and stuff. So it is a lot of learning and understanding. Like I've even read some interviews just to get some insight. Um, which is why a lot of my hero time is very more influenced by the N64 model instead of the artwork. Because the N64 model, as I've learned from the interviews, was the source material that the artwork is based on. So I try to go like in between to get a good look and feel. And like... Here's a good example of me improving over the years. Oh, this one's just most recent. This was the very first iteration of the Hero of Time mod. I'm not even sure I showed this one on the channel. Then here's the ver first version I ever released. And this is the version I'm currently working on, which actually I'm even more improving because I just feel like it was a little uncanny. Like it's just, it's close, but not quite where I want it. But yeah, here's a good um, kind of demonstration of me learning as this person said just kind of studying and you know yeah but never stop learning yeah that's really all the questions i've got right now and i'm sure this video is going to be pretty decently long so if you stayed long enough to get to the end thank you very much i very much appreciate it um like subscribe or don't it, it it's your choice um but yeah thank you for watching